Uh, yes, yes, welcome again uh, to our viewers and subscribers. Anyway, we are with the bars, the head of the Honigan funeral home, Mr. Honigan himself. Yes, we are. So, uh, you going to tell us a little bit about Uncle, right? We're Uncle from, well, we are right here in Westmoreland in Savlamore. Uh, the funeral takes place in Waterworks and uh, you know, he lays the rest of her. From West Palm. West Palm, West Palm. Yes. No more, I'll All right, so tell me a little bit about my uncle. Uh, uncle. My uncle is out of three children, two sons and one daughter from my grandmother. My grandmother is Ethel Williams, one of her love so dearly. She passed away earlier, but still cannot be forgotten. Now, uncle, his correct name is Horatio Williams. I know him from a child as Milton Williams. But since he came to business with me, government document proved that his name is Horatio Williams. Horatio Williams. Right. Uncle, as everybody calls. He was my uncle. Members of staff adapt him as uncle. I would always leave him to do every and anything in the office. If he is still a wonderful enemy, if anyone wants to go anywhere, he would be willing. And my children, Christian and Melvin, was very small. He was the one who would juggle them away around with vehicles. He learned to drive when he came in my company, and I gave him a vehicle that he could carry my children everywhere they want to go because, as the person in charge, I'm not always able to move. But since he was a freelancer in the company, he could do just about what he wanted him to do. He spent approximately 30 years with me. And to the time of his death, the closest family to him was myself. He died leaving two sons and one daughter. The two sons are like a prodigal, never been with his father up to the time of death. But the daughter was at funeral, even reading the lesson. One of the sons did not even come to the funeral, but the one that is a porter without fraud was here facing all over the place. Now, I have no mind to pay him that mind because we grew together, we worked together with our grandmother, and just like I have what I have, he could have it just the same. Because in life, it's not what you collect, it's what you save. So he too to squander his life and then grudge for what he don't have. Now, that is why in the earlier scripture, he spoke of those two children, when one can kill Abel because of who have and who don't have. We look at him, Joseph, his brothers and sister killed him because of what he had just a good dream. So I'm here standing on the promise of my grandmother's prayer, trusting the Lord and doing what is best for him and in him. Now, everyone will not like you. And if everyone do like you, something is wrong. So I am more than happy to know that I am following his command. And who love it, love it. Who don't love it, don't love it. But as far as I am concerned, strangers love me. And if strangers love me, I mean I've been doing something good for them. So who wants to squander all their life? I hate me for it. That's their problem. I want to, for the rest of my tenure on earth, do what I want can do, assist who I can assist, help who I can help, give a job to those who I can, and to the best of my ability, follow the will of God. Now, far as I'm concerned, I cry to the at funeral because I am happy that I did what I could. 
We don't talk about the police. I was more than surprised for their help. Because when I asked the trooper for four riders, the trooper said, no, he deserves five. I'm going to give him five. I have a friend here from, all the way from Santa Cruz, Diamond. If I was such a bad person, they would not be here. And as far as I'm King concerned, right, let us look at funeral directors throughout the island. Clarendon, people from St. Mary, all those Avenue Hanover right up are here. Now, it is saying that I am doing what people love. And I am going to continue the rest of my life doing what makes each other happy. Now, I believe I must tell everyone the truth. If I have a friend and you can't tell me where I'm wrong, that's not my no, friend. Afraid. And if I can't tell my friend where he's wrong, that's not my friend. Mm -hmm. So, who can tell me and show me exactly what I do wrong? I love them. And I remember about 25 years ago, I was at customs. When I went there, I had one person I think was doing good for me. When I looked, somebody came one day and said, give me your papers. I recognized he was not doing nothing good for me. That person gave me a better pricing. I said, something was wrong, but I don't know. One next time I go, I go to somebody else. Same pricing for the same good. And I think more or less that strangers are sometimes better than friends. And I am going to go trusting and hoping in the Lord that my will, my days, might belong to the earth. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Yeah, man. All right, so. If I live after this, then the funeral for, uh, I'm trying to remember his name. Anyway, I don't remember my name exactly right now, but we have some other funeral I come up after this. All right, so guys, we are out, so enjoy the whole entire thing. Yeah, man. What's up?
Di Cici Lanzo Cici Lanzo
Come on, come on, I'm too bad. We are. We must be a true.
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. And whether I go, he know, and the way, he know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I invite you to remain standing as I invite Minister Nathan to come and she will be the moderator for these proceedings here at the Waterworks Holiness Christian Church at the homegoing service for Mr. Milton Horatio Williams. Minister Nathan. Can we worship the Lord? Can we lift our hands and give God some praise? So we we'll sing the opening hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, Two of the Happy Winter. The Lord's My Shepherd, I not one. He makes me down.
Sam, I'm going to invite Deaconess Helen Clark to lead us to the throne of grace. Deaconess Clark. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let us pray. Father in heaven, oh how we love you. Oh how we lift your name in all the world. Father God, we give you thanks for this another day. We give you thanks for life, Lord. And although we are gathered here this morning, oh God, in a memorial service, Father God, we are asking you to take everything out of every hand this morning, oh God and take it under your control. This morning, Father God, I present the family, O oh God, to you. Lord, surround them with your love and your mercies even now, O oh God. Put your powerful arms around them, O oh God. Hold them in the hall of your hands, O oh God. Comfort them even now, Lord Jesus. And help them, O oh God, not to weep as though there is no hope, because there is hope in you, King Jesus. There is hope in you. Father God, Bless this service today, O oh God, as we shall go in. Take everything in your hands as we say thanks to you. In your mighty holy name, I ask these mercies, and I say amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Can I hear some praise in the house? Can I hear some praise in the house? God has been good to us. And even though the temperature might be warm, it's good that we can feel it. Amen? Amen. And so I just want to welcome each and every one into the house of the Lord. This is the Watermarks Holiness Christian Church, a place where we don't put any tight jacket on anybody. We are here to worship the Lord in a different fashion. Amen? Amen. 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 So I seek your cooperation this morning. At this time, I'm going to invite Diane Williams' daughter to come with the first lesson, Psalm 90, from verse 1 to 12. Good morning, everyone. Scripture reading taken from Psalms 90, from verse 1 to verse 12. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought, Sorry. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and says, Return ye, children of men. For a thousand years is in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and, and as a watch in night, thou carriest them away as with a flood. Thou art as sheep, in the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the, in the morning it, it flourisheth and groweth up, in the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of sky, countenance, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three scores and ten, if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. 
12 and ending. So teach us us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Here ended the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Can I hear some prayers in the house? I just want to remind you that only one person is dead. We are all alive. So God has blessed us that we can worship Him. I just want to take time out to extend our condolences to the family on behalf of the pastor and members of the Waterworks Wilderness Christian Church. I know that we are here with mixed feelings, but remember, our God is able to keep you. Amen? Amen. At this time, we're going to some tributes, and we start with um, Camario Davis, followed by N. Paisley Steps. So you come as you come. Morning, church. McCoy <clears throat> um, and Paisley is my name, stepson of uncle. Um, I'm not the one that grew with him. I wasn't there much of the time. I am originally from Darlington, where I grew with my grandma and dad. But one thing I know, whenever I visit Waterworks, we are uncles. It's always love and respect. Um, he has never disrespected me. He has never shouted at me. Um, we have been out one time and he's to a rum bar when I was there. I'm not a drinker, but that was the one night he took me out and we drank until I get drunk and come in and hide from me. Mummy me didn't know. But I am not a singer also, so I asked my colleague here, Kimara Davis, to you know do a tribute and sing. But I do appreciate Uncle's always love and respect for that gentleman. 100 percent you know, um, I always admire him, how he comes in and talk to me, especially with my sister. Um, we have a love for my sister and also my brother Oran, especially Sasha. Um, I think he also had a name for her, Poochie or something like that. Poochie or something like that. Yeah, it's just always love for Uncle, and I do miss him. I spoke to him several times over the phone. I did come and visit him when he was um, on, on the sick, on the part to, you know, the sick bed and so forth. But I do, do pray and hope for the family. Mommy, um, stay strong, we're here. I know you love him, you take care of him 100%, even though you know mommy deserves him, but it's just, that's just, that's just mommy. Yes, but she do, she, she do her best. To be honest, um, she stick by him 100 percent right there. Um, and that's a woman, that's what you look for in a wife. A woman that will stick to you no matter what. And we do appreciate you no matter what. We love you, alright? I don't think I can beat that. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Just lift your hands and give God a hallelujah praise. Give him a hallelujah praise. Hallelujah to God. I just want to do this song to encourage somebody. Praise God. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in.
So I'm going to ask for some assistance to get this done. We will not proceed any further. We cannot allow God's place to become a place where your people flocks.
Good morning, everyone. This is from 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 50, 50 to 50. I'm reading from the CSB version. What am I saying, brothers and sisters, in this? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor can corruption inherit incorruption. Listen, I am telling you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For this corruptible body must be clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body must be clothed with immortality. When this corruptible body is clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body is clothed with immortality, then the saying that it is written will take place. Death has not has been swallowed up in victory. Where death, where death is your victory? Where death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the Lord's work because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Here is the reading of the words, God's word. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It is with great sadness that we all stand here approximately 12 p.m. on the 28th day of September to remember a stalwart from Honeygun's funeral service. As a child growing up, I could not be late for school. The work would still get done. And you know, not how much time that he would have called and say, Oh, wait there, man. Me and New Year. He would show up. He's my granduncle by birth. And he's uncle for me. He's my father's biological uncle. But to the entire staff of Honeygun's funeral service and the customers that we serve, he's uncle. <laughs> He has never failed in any capacity. Doesn't matter what capacity we would try to fit him in. I remember when we just started getting vans. And there was a funeral at the Catholic Church coming from the south office. And I said, Uncle, you heard a scare, can you big box there, you know? He said, I'm not driving no van. We said, Uncle, you have to drive it because it's full up. But we have a party here hearse. Matter of fact, you come in, you can drive your purse and you drive the van. At the time, it was the black suburban van that we had. Lord have mercy. We had to manually set that van and ask him kindly to drive. And best believe, Virginia, he did not go over 40, to and from. But he came back scratch free, accident free, and the deceased was buried with dignity. There are so many memories that we have of him. Some of them we can share here because they're in a temple and respect is due to Christ. But the memories that he left with us are embedded deep in our hearts. Memories of me with uncle was always that no matter if I give me hers, and if I go to school, when daddy couldn't make it, uncle was always there. When I went to Manning's, I never took taxi. Uncle took me and came for me. And if me go on party, daddy tell him to wait. And if you go to library, daddy tell him to listen, no let him. And I remember when I just started having boyfriends and uncle was my little secret keeper. And daddy would kill him for one of them because he knew everything about that one. And he would carry me and wait and just to see the person and come back. And daddy would be so mad. But he was never mad. He took pleasure in ensuring that I was okay. And so, Uncle, I miss you. I miss you very much. Because persons like you only come back once. I'm going to have some of my other, some of my other um, 
co-worker shares sharp memories of Uncle and then we'll sing. <coughs> Good evening everyone. Why? Right. And can I forget one day? Uncle come from funeral and he tank up in a man. <laughs> and I said, Uncle, I'm not care that Paul in a man. Give me your message. And he said, No, they are going with him. And then the two side of the road, two side of the road. And he said, Stay nice straight. That's something. Come on, look at me more. And he reached a Paul and he, he back up his ears and, and lick him up bamboo seat. He said, Send, send. Frank Lawson said, Move the ears to the funeral. And he said, Sit down and he said, Only look at his ears. He said, Uncle, come here, man. Why, actually, it's very worse. So, I'm missing my lap. Just really, really, really missing. Yeah, man, I'm really missing. Good evening, everyone. I can remember my last occasion like this. In a small like this, when my grandmother died. This is my grandmother's favorite child, not of all. Because my grandmother said, remember the Bible. The Bible said, Jesus went for the child and the sheep, but that was lost. So he was hardly with my grandmother, but that's the one she loved. She said, I am following the scripture. And I believe in God. So she follows also to the end. I am happy to know that at the end of the day, I did what I could for uncle. <laughs> Sorry, forgive me, I move on. But here we are today. I'm not friend for sir. I'm crying for our happiness. Because honestly, I'm happy that we did this for uncle. <laughs> As I said, had I not done this, I will be sorry afterwards. When I look at him, the police, I asked for four outriders. They said, no. <laughs> you deserve much more than that, and you're going to get them. This will be what's first to say. They are not to get paid, but I don't care. They are my friends. They treat me well. I must treat them well. Because I'm not treating them out of bread. I'm treating them out of love. For all those who are here today, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Now, this is the church that we were all born and grown in. And it's not this building, because the building on the left, where I used to, when leaving for school, I remember one day I went on the day and I lost my money on school, so I think I found money, but my money was I lost on the day. So, this temple, I wish for it the best and only the best. No. I don't do that in here. <laughs> if he was not here, I don't think he would get the send out that he's getting now. So I am more than happy, more than glad that the church gave us permission to see what our grandmother did for us in the early days. Now, there might be ups and downs. But be mindful. Jesus, when he went on the cross, he had ups and downs, he fell with the cross. So whatever happened, 
This is our church. And we are going to worship the Lord in the beauty of all of us. Now, I'm going to be brief. So, thank you all for coming. And I hope you come and enjoy yourself to the fullness. Bless you.
family. In the past, of the lead, Horatia Winston, Milton Williams, otherwise called uncle. You see here, we're all funeral directors. And today, supporting the Honigans family is Honigans South, Honigans Fir Tree, Doyle's, Bobby Minto, Dunkley's, Madden's, Della Pena, Sam Isaac's Phillips and Sons, Inspiration, Audrey E, Thorpe, Genus Music Band, Trinity, Honduras, Yellow the Cellar, Benz, House of Wills Mortuary, White Williams, Willows, 
Brathwaite, and if there's any other funeral home here, we want to acknowledge you also.
Your presence has been a beacon of light in my darkness. June, Squaddy, Kenyut, Diane, Jasmine, Bernadette, Evelyn, Miriam, and Miss Hannigan. Through the tears and sorrows, your love and sorrows have been a source of strength. Your calls, visits, and message offered a solace when I needed it the most. As we move forward, we carry the memory of Uncle in our hearts, the warmth and compassion of our family and friends who rallied around us. Your willingness to lend a helping hand, whether it was offering a listening ear or a simple sitting with me in silence, is the burden we carried. Your acts of kindness touch my heart in words we can hardly convey. Thank you all for being there during this challenging chapter of my life. Your kindness will forever be cherished and remembered. With your continued support, we find the courage to heal and celebrate the beautiful memories we share. With deepest gratitude and love, I thank you again. To Uncle, my beloved, though you are no longer by my side, your love and presence linger in my heart in such a powerful way that I still feel you're here. The memories we share keep you alive in my thoughts and I find solace knowing that we'll reunite someday. Until then, you remain, you remain my love. Sleep on, Uncle, sleep on and take care of us. the word and I pray you listen attentively as she comes. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the, Lord. the Bible says, Let everything that hath breath praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. It's a solemn occasion because, as Minister Nathan said a while ago, death is not easy to deal with. And on behalf of the Waterworks Holiness Christian Church, we again extend condolences to the family. The Honeygun family, the Pennycooks family, Leg family, Williams family, all the family of the deceased. And we pray that God will continue to comfort you, that he will continue to strengthen you as you go through the rest of the day, that you're going to feel his peace like never before. We also pause to recognize the presence of Reverend Lucetta Williams in our midst and all other ministers who may be present here today. We also recognize Ms. Abigail Malcolm, council candidate for the Carmel Mountain Division. And all other servants of the states of Jamaica. Member of Parliament is also here. We recognize you too, sir. Welcome to the Waterworks Holiness Christian Church, and we hope it will not be your last visit. And to all other persons, other distinguished guests, we welcome you to this event today. As I say, it's a solemn occasion, but we are also glad that as Minister Nathan testified, that he would have responded to the gospel. Amen and that he decided to make Jesus his choice. I want to speak to us for a short while from the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 20, from verse 11 all the way to 14. That's Revelation 20, from verse 11 all the way to 14. And this is what it says. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books 
according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Here ends a portion of the reading of God's holy word. And we honor it by saying, thanks be to God. And I want to challenge our hearts this afternoon on the topic, after death. After death. And for centuries, persons have been fascinated with the afterlife, have been fascinated with death. And there are many religions and many philosophies about what happened after we die. And the Muslims, for example, believe that the least reward you can get after you die is 72 beautiful virgins with some servants. And as I said, for centuries, persons have been thinking about what happens after death. And if you are living in the earlier centuries and you are a rich person and you die, your servant was killed and buried with you because they thought perhaps you might need your servant in the afterlife. And even as West Indians, we have our own stories about what happens after death. And there are persons who will tell you, and some of you present here, that your loved one come back to visit you and people say they see duppy and all kind of thing. So many fascinating stories about the afterlife. And there are those who believe that this life is the only thing that there is, and after death, that is it. But I'm here to challenge us today to let us know that there is more after we die. And as we look in the word of God, we realize that there are some things that would have happened after someone dies. And based on what John saw, I can tell us that after death, there is a resurrection. After we die, these bodies will raise again. And there are persons who, in wanting to escape the resurrection, they do all kinds of things to their bodies. But as we see in the word of God, that every person who dies will be resurrected. It doesn't matter where you die. It doesn't matter how you die. It doesn't matter when you die. You will be resurrected. And there are some bodies which are buried where even police can't find them. But can I tell you that even though the authorities may not be able to find those bodies now, when the Lord So if we are buried in the grave, we will be resurrected. If our bodies were cremated, we will be resurrected. If we died at sea and our bodies were not found, we will still be resurrected. As I said before, it doesn't matter how we die, when we die or where we die, there will be a resurrection. Praise God. So all those loved ones that we have lost, they too will be resurrected. Because Jesus himself is the resurrection and the life and he's the first fruit of the resurrection. Hallelujah. And if he was resurrected, we also will be resurrected because we saw as we read a while ago that the dead, small and great, they were standing before God. And it says the sea gave up the dead. Death and hell gave up the dead. Wherever the dead were, there was a resurrection. And as we look again at the word of God, not only is there a resurrection after death, but after death, there will be a reckoning. Hello, somebody. 
somebody. After death, there will be a reckoning. Because as we read in the word of God, it says that the books were opened. After death, each of us will have to give an account of how we lived our life. And the director sung, I sung a while ago, I will live my life for Jesus. And I say to us, the best thing we can do is to live our lives for Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when the books were opened, it says that the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. So after death, there will be a reckoning. Because we are living in an age where there are some people, they are hiding to do what they are doing. Hello, somebody. They are waiting until dark to do what they have to do. But can I tell you, even if you do it in the darkest of night, God still sees and it is recorded. Every action is recorded. Every word is recorded. So even if our family members are unaware of our activities, I want somebody in Waterworks to know God is aware of our activities and there will be a reckoning because the eyes of the Lord, they are in every place beholding the evil and the good. So there will be a reckoning. Because we are living in an age where there are many people who are lamenting about the corrupt justice system. And some people are crying out for justice because they don't like what is happening. But I want to tell somebody that there is a righteous judge, hallelujah, and he is getting ready to come. He cannot be bribed, somebody. Hello, somebody. You can't, hallelujah. He cannot be manipulated. And since I've been in Jamaica, and the Jamaicans always joke, Jamaica could get out of anything. They can talk their way out of anything and anywhere. But when we get before the righteous judge, hallelujah, if what is written is not in line with the standards of God, oh, what weeping and mourning of gnashing of teeth there will be. There will be a reckoning. Because God is recording everything, everything, everything is being recorded. So even if pastor is unaware of what some church members are doing, God knows. We can hide from humans, but we cannot hide from God. And one of these days, we will have to answer for everything we have done. So don't let your blood pressure go up because of the corrupt justice system. Because can I tell you when God returns, hallelujah, when he returns, everyone will be judged according to their works. Whether it be bad, whether it be good, whether it be evil, everyone will be judged. There will be no escape for anyone. Because we live in a world, if you know some people, you might get off. But when Jesus comes, it doesn't matter who you know. You will still have to answer to God. You will still have to answer to God. So it says the books were open. And people were judged according to their works. So it means, therefore, at Waterworks, we need to be careful of how we live. Amen. We need to be careful of what we do. We need to be careful of what we say and where we go. Because God is keeping records. God is keeping records. And we have to ensure that everything that we do is pleasing to God. Because when the books are open, it will reveal our entire lives. And as we look again, not only was there a resurrection, not only was there a reckoning, but there was also a recompense. Oh dear. Yeah. 
Because it says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I sat in the chapel at work yesterday and the preacher was lamenting because they have spiritual emphasis week at the Caribbean Wesleyan College. And the preacher was lamenting that we no longer preach about hell and those kind of things. We prefer to give motivational speeches. We prefer to let people know how they can be successful because we don't want to scare anybody. We want people to come to church and feel nice and feel good. But according to the word of God, there will be a recompense. If your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, it's not my word, it's right there, you will be cast into the lake of fire. Oh, how sad it will be if having sat in this funeral and we hear the word of God and we get before the great white throne and we get before God and when the roll is called, roll call, our names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Oh, what a sad day that will be. Oh, what a sad day that will be. Because you see, Jesus died so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus died and gave us the opportunity to have our Because as I said, we believe that some people believe that hell is on earth because the place is so hot. And I told my sister recently, Lord, if the place is so hot, I'm going to live my life to please God because I don't want to go to hell.
overcome in the morning. Hallelujah. Because John 21, 7 says, He that overcometh, hallelujah, shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So there will be a recompense. Those who believe in God, hallelujah, will enjoy the splendors of the home that God has prepared for us. But those who don't believe in God, John repeated it again in chapter 21. Fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It was repeated again in chapter 21. And the fact that it was repeated, it means it's serious. It's serious, it's serious. And I say to somebody in Waterworks, make sure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. We have to do it now while we are alive. Because there are some people who get away from the earthly justice system and does justice. And God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is the biblical account of what happens after we die. Hallelujah. As I said, many religions have their theories. Many people have their theories. Many people believe that this is it, so I'm going to live my life the way I want to live my life because after I die, that is it. But from what we have just read, there will be a resurrection after we die. After we die, there will be a reckoning because we have to tell God what we did with this life that he so graciously lent to us. And after we die, there will be a recompense where each person will get what they deserve. So if you are here today, do not leave this place without surrendering to God. I know it's a funeral service, but it's the best place to give your heart to God. Because this funeral service reminds us that time is short. It reminds us that we do not know the next person who will lie in this coffin. And after we die, there is no repentance in the grave. So while we are alive, amen, now is the best time to say, Lord, I give myself to you. I give my heart to you. I give my all to you. Use me for your glory. Because I want to know that at the end of my life, I will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, amen. At the end of my life, I want to know, hallelujah, that I will be able to sing the song that the angels cannot sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Don't leave here without surrendering to God because death is not the end of life, amen? After that, life is just beginning and God is righteous and his judgments are sure. God bless you. Amen. Get out of that time to steal us away. Steal us away. Steal us away. Get out of that time to steal us away. Steal us and bury us away. Get out of that time. Steal us away, steal us away, steal us away. Get past the time to steal us away, steal us and carry us away. Praise God, the word has gone forth. The word of God said, if you're here, 
Thy voice, hard not your heart, nor stiffen your neck. At this time, um, the Member of Parliament, Mr. Wright, we pay his respect. After which we have the eulogy read by Mrs. Catherine Scarlett, the niece of Congress. first acknowledge the presence of our Reverend Mr. and Mrs. Surgeon. Also let me acknowledge the choir, Ms. Lewis, Ms. Hannigan. I also want to acknowledge the presence of the JCF. And uh, my visiting friend from all the way in New York, I don't do for this funeral. I also want to recognize the presence of my sister who came up here earlier this morning. That's right, Carmen. Uh, and also, the counselor caretaker for the Cornwall Mountain Division, Ms. Abigail Malcolm. I must also apologize for the counselor, Ms. Donald Foster, who is unavoidable absent today. And uh, of course, we want to extend our condolences to the family members and friends of. Mr. Williams. I could almost say that I would have met Ms. Will, Mr. Williams a few months back. Is that so, right? Yes, and uh, we did have a good chat. But, you know, um, after listening to all what would have said earlier, it says to me that Mr. Williams was indeed a good man. And it also says to me that he would have commit himself to our Creator. Is that so, Pastor? And uh, the Bible says that our years are three scores and ten, and by reason of strength, may go four score. But to say to you and remind you that Mr. Williams would have gone his four score and counting. I want to say to us who are here, let us try to emulate Mr. Williams, a hard-working, dedicated man to himself and his family. I know at this time it must be a time of grieving. You know, we've seen many shed tears. You know, many would have broken down. But I want to say to you, that God will never leave you comfortless. He will be with you in times of need and in times of trouble. Another point I would love to make here is that when we see all the funeral services gathered here to pay their trip, and uh, it shows unity. And I wish for us as Jamaican Westmoreans to show such unity amongst each other. You know, I keep saying a lot have been happening in the past 
years, months, but it is getting more serious. And uh, I don't know how much, how much of you would have heard about a lightning struck there at a play field. No rain was falling. But persons would have gotten hit by lightning. We learned about a young, young child throat was cut. We learned about the quadruple, quadruple, quadruple murder that take place in St. Catherine. I'm saying to us, how much more can our Creator bear? It is getting serious. But I want to say to us here that we must unite and show love to each other. If you love your brother and your sister, you don't hurt them. But also, for us who would have known those persons who would have been carrying out those acts, you know, if we keep silent, it could be at our doorstep the next time around. So, you know what to do. You know who to call. And you know who to discourage from those acts. We want to see a society where we can gather once more and unite. I just, in all my life, I've seen where hurricane and storm would have threatened our little island here, Jamaica. But we were spared. I'm wondering how much more will we be spared because of all what is taking place. So my brothers and sisters, let us then continue to pray for our little island, our community, and our people that God will change their wicked and cruel heart and let them know that. We should be loved by each other. I don't know when and where the crime and violence will struck. You don't know either. But I would want to say, let us continue to pray hard day and night for our country. God bless you.
born to Ethel and James Williams. When their grief over the loss of their firstborn was replaced by sheer joy on May 30, 1942. When in Foreman's Hill in Monique, the earthly journey of Minton was signaled by the squalls of their newborn son. And so Skelly Street and the uncle, as he was later called, began his earthly journey. His early years were spent with his parents at four months hill in St. John. But as is a very common practice in Jamaica, many persons from rural communities move to the bright lights of Kingston looking for better opportunities. And not surprising, therefore, James, along with his wife and young son, journeyed to Kingston, where they settled at Sarah Street in Almontown to Kingston, where he attended the Almontown Elementary School. The family soon expanded with the birth of his sister, Monica, and shortly thereafter, his brother, Winston both of whom were born at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. And so life for the family of five went well for a time, as Uncle Jim, as he was affectionately known, a well-established tailor, plied his trade and took care of his family. But life happens, and in the midst of life, there is death. Uncle Jim, became ill. And as he grew worse, his family returned to St. Anne, where they were assisted. But unfortunately, he did not recover, and he died. And so his wife, Ethel, now a widow, much like Naomi in the Bible, left the land of her in-laws took her three children and journeyed home to Waterworks in West Mullet, where her mother's loving arms were there to help her to tend for her children. And her mother's arms, eyes, and ears were well needed to help her with her three rambunctious charges. My grandmother will often, would have often recounted that once when she was washing outside, prompted by the Holy Spirit, she went inside to check on her children and was just in time to catch Milton with an ice pick in his hand, attempting to remove the eye of his sister. And so the family settled in at Waterworks, and Milton, along with his siblings, attended the Coggsview Primary School. When his tenure at Coggsview ended, his mother, being a woman of faith and not believing in persons eating of the bread of idleness, sent Milton off to Cobbler Training Camp in Manchester so that he could learn a trade. Milton was by now an adult, and having tasted the freedom of not being under the watchful eyes of Deaconess Ethel Williams, he headed east and went to the bright lights of Kingston. And for him began a journey that was marked by among other things, cigarettes, booze, and vapes. Milton sought and gained employment in the shoe industry. He worked with Talos Leather Company for a number of years. His hard work, attitude, and disposition did not go unnoticed, and soon he rose to the rank of a supervisor. 
he eventually left Tanners and went to work with Leader Mode, again working his way up the ladder to a supervisory position. One thing was certain in those early days was that regardless of whatever else he did, when it was speedy, he would be seen hopping on a number 90 bus, a number 91 bus to Duhini Park to take care of his obligations as a father. His later years, Melissa McClellan says, life takes you to unexpected places, but love takes you home. By now, Milton was getting somewhat tired with the bright lights and the fast life. And so in 1996, he turned his back on the glamour of the city and returned home to Waterworks. There, he gained employment with Hollygun's funeral service, working with his nephew in the business, where he remained until ill health confined him to bed. At Hollygun's, he was a faithful employee and the same attributes that saw him rising before were quickly evident. He endeared himself to all those whom he served. He refused to cause trouble. And if confronted, he would walk away. Like Ernie from Sesame Street, he would always rub his head and just move away from conflict. James in her song says, at last my love has come along. My lonely days are over and life is like a song. And so it was for Milton because he found in Waterworks a soulmate, Pauline Bennett, who we know as Miss Anne. She became the love of his life, and she stayed by his side until the very end. And so, while they might not have taken the trip to the altar to say their I do's, they remained together until death did they part. Their relationship lasted for more than 30 years. Uncle eventually became ill and was confined home to bed. But his was a peaceful engagement, as he was when he was up and about, so he was on his sickbed, peaceful and calm to the end. He was visited and prayed for by many persons, including his daughter Diane and his sister Monica who made it a duty to read the Bible, sing, and pray with him and for him. It is said in the word of God that the effectual fervent cry of a righteous man, and dare I say woman, avail it much. And so the prayers of Deaconess Ethel Williams for her prodigal son, which ended with her passing, in 1992, still found the ears of God. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And so, like Solomon, at the end of his days, he would have thought to himself, vanity of vanity. My work ethics, my friendships, my children, the love of my life, all that I have worked to accomplish, all is really vanity. And so he eventually prayed the sinner's prayer. And many times in his closing days, Miss Anne would hear him speaking and would say to him, what are you doing? And he would reply, I am praying. My sister taught me how to pray. In his very final days, he told Miss Anne, I'm going. And she said, where are you going? His answer was, I'm going home to Jesus. 
do you want to come with me? And so he transitioned on Monday, August 21st, 2023. Some of his favorites, his Armstrong bicycle, which he won by collecting DNG bottle stoppers. The TV show Sesame Street, its favorite food, stew peas. Uncle leaves behind to mourn his love and soulmate, Pauline, in San. His children, Carlton, who we know as Owen or Boti, Troy or Horace, his daughter, Diane. His stepchildren, Oran, Nikoya, and Shoshana. His siblings, Winston and Monica. Nephews, nieces, grandnephews, grandnieces. A host of relatives and friends. And so we say goodbye, Skelly. Goodbye, Street. Goodbye, Andy. Goodbye, Uncle. Goodbye, soulmates. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Brother. Goodbye, Uncle. May your soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine. <laughs> for the woman who loves her man the most. It's a good time now because next month, October, is Heroes Weekend or Heroes Time where we acknowledge our heroes. And it would be a good thing if we could put in that application and get something for her. Now, it is all well said and done, but and here she is, I don't know, she is one strong woman. And uh, I can't find the words really to say to her how much we do appreciate you. For the Williams family, the Honegans family, the Fairclothes family, we want to thank you because you have made us proud. You have stood beside your man through thick, through thick and thin you have stood there and you have made us proud and for that I want to say it publicly you are a good woman Whatever you have done, blessings are there awaiting you. Amen. The 
life is not for you, it's for your children. Yeah. Yeah. My mother, Ethel Williams, she died a praying woman and she left for me a whole storeroom of prayer. And that's what I am living off today. I want you members and friends here to continue to hold on in, her, in your prayers. Let us give her the support that is needed at this time. And we love you. And we pray God will continue to bless Pleasant afternoon to you all. A pleasant afternoon to you all. service for Uncle and let me extend condolences from William's family. Somebody asked him to win that. Who is that? I'm Sister William. Pastor William. <laughs> you ask him. Yes. It, it is a sad event. And even for this not so nice, you know. When death comes in the family, we grieve. Yes. Am I right? Yes. We cry. Oh, yes. tell us something. But as the, 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 the chorus, death has a time to steal us and Uncle is gone. So you have heard enough that if you are not ready, get ready. But time is really not. It's time to pray for the family. They are grieving. And so I am going to ask the family members to stand. Stand, family members, once you are related to uncle. Mm -hmm. When that you know, you know, family, you know. When they come, you know, ooh, ooh. Us to close our eyes. This is the time when they need strength. The eternal God is our refuge. The unrenewed never lacked enough. Father, we worship you. We adore you. We give you thanks for this moment. We don't know about the next moment, but we know about now. We are alive and we are on the ground of repentance where we can take fucking us. And so we give you thanks for life. For your many rich blessings. God, you know everything about death. But I'm glad that one of these days, you, Jesus, you are going to put death under control. Death here is your sin. We are with your victory. Death will be controlled. And there will be no more death. So God, these your people are mourning for the loss of their loved ones. We ask for physical, spiritual, mental, and all the strength they need as they continue to live. We pray for your presence, your protection, your care, your provision for them. And help them to know that you care. Your heart is touched with their grief. When the days are weary and a long night dreary, you care. So we commit them into your hands, Lord. And we ask that you will keep them together in the bond of love and unity. The family unity. Yes. And also the Christian unity. For those who are Christians, those who are not Christians, we pray that they will surrender their life to you. Not to join a church, 
but to surrender, to repent, and to be ready because dead has the time to steal us and carry us away. We don't know who will be the next, oh Lord. If you thought to be ready, watching and waiting and listening, we have a special blessing of our family members now, and that you will continue to be with them, continue to keep, guide, protect, cover them, strengthen them, as they go through life. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Blessed Holy Spirit. And if everybody there, Amen. Amen. God bless you, dear one. God bless you. That you're coming, white, black, silver. Run it, musician.
Yeah, you know, I'm giving you natural history. I'm going to take you yourself. So. Man, Uncle you are good, good boy. Run the earth, them. Run the earth. Uncle you are good, good boy. Run the earth, run the earth. Uncle you are good, good boy. Run the way I go. Uncle you are good, good boy. Uncle you are good, good boy. Say ya wanna blow, me blow. Say ya wanna blow, me blow. Come so, come so, straight, straight. Come so, come so, straight. Uncle, sweet. Me uncle, me father. I got the young baby. Baby, don't hold it. People are full of the activity. People are full of the spring. Yeah, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come
alone so others can get to view who as well. Please, I'm going to ask you to view and move along. Just view and move along. No more to move. Who's already moved? Come on, sit. Stop. Right, sir. I'm going to ask persons who are viewing just to view and move along so others can get to view. seconds to go view and move it down 60 seconds. All right, while they close the casket, we're going to turn to our program at the graveside. Shall we gather at the river where the bright angels feed? Actually, with a crystal tie forever flowing from the throne of God. After we do the first stanza and the chorus, then we're going to commit the body. We're going to ask Minister Nathan to lead us. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels' feet have trod? Some of us have shared through 
through these passing years a wonderful companionship and fellowship with our fellow faithful brother. We cherish the many blessed and hallowed memories that come to us in these moments. His faithfulness, friendship, and consecrated life will continue their radiance and testimony in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom he loved and served, we commit his body to rest, knowing that his spirit with the Lord in his heavenly host, in so doing, we rest our hearts in fresh confidence upon the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to life through Jesus Christ, whom shall change our veiled body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. We now commit his body, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetually shine upon him. We'll continue with the singing of our song on the program. Ere we reach the shining river, lay every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide our robe and crown. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather we at the river that flows by the pool of God. At the swing of the river, Jesus said a thing. He says, who can never see? He can sometimes say, Truth. Then when all of life is over and the work on earth is done 
And the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the road is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the daunting setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and the work on earth is done, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Oh, when the road is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody give God the highest praise. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. When the road is called up yonder, I'll be here. The word of God says, make your call in and election sure. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus. We're going to do the choruses and your program. Meet me by the river. No grave can hold my body down. Goodbye, world. And by and by when the morning comes, we'll do them in that order. Thank you. Oh, 
direction upon our lives as we continue God to live for you and we pray again for those who have not yet given their hearts to your God that today will be a reminder that death have a time to steal us and to carry us away so we pray their salvation in Jesus name we ask for your guidance as we journey to our different homes this afternoon mighty God that you will journey with us. He will protect us, mighty God, as we travel, O oh God, near and far this afternoon. Thank you for all that you have already done for the family and what you will continue to do for them, mighty God. We give you thanks and praise. Continue to bring comfort and peace of mind as we continue to look to you in no other name but in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit. And we say Amen and Amen. As a way of acknowledgement, the family of the late Milton Williams wishes to express sincere gratitude and appreciation to all who have so generously offered prayers, visits, calls, kind words of comfort, expression of love, 
and your presence here today. Your act of kindness and assistance of broad comfort and strength during their time of bereavement. May God bless. Attend you all. Amen. Amen. May I receive the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace now and forever. Amen. God bless you.